Hello friends, welcome to another show on .NET. Uh, today I have uh, Shurab with me and we're here to talk about .NET Core and gRPC. Come and find out more. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is another show on on.net and today I have Shirab Shirati with me. He's part of the .NET Core team and he's here to talk to us about gRPC and .NET Core. Right. What is gRPC? So gRPC is a framework for remote procedure calls. Okay. So ever since people made computers, they wanted to make computers talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So a good RPC framework would give us semantics for making remote calls but make it appear like it was local. Great. So ideally, I would just call a method like I normally would, mm -hmm. except it would execute somewhere else. Right. Okay. And gRPC is a framework that lets me do that. Great. So gRPC was born out of the Stubby project at Google. Okay. And gRPC is the open source variant. It's, it's based on similar. It's based on that, mm -hmm. but it's slightly different. Okay. And um, so what we've done in, uh, on the .NET team is we've actually been partnering with a couple of folks at Google, a couple of folks at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation to donate code mm -hmm. to the CNCF to make a performant gRPC stack on .NET Core. Awesome. So we're working with people across different orgs yeah. and the Cloud Native Foundation to make a gRPC on .NET Core the, yeah. the framework to, to do stuff. Now, what can I do with gRPC today? Like, if I wanted to write something, wh what's a good example for a gRPC solution? Uh, so gRPC is unopinionated, right? Okay. It gives you four, like I guess, low-level primitives. Mm -hmm. You have unary calls, where I send a request, single request, I get a single response back from the server. Okay. I have client streaming. I can send multiple messages to the server. Okay and get, as the client, and get back a single response. Sure. I have server streaming, which is that flipped. I send one message, and I get back multiple messages. Okay. As well as full duplex communication. Right. And based on those four primitive ty types of calls, you can pretty much build any workload on top of gRPC. And that works over HTTP, am I correct? So yes, so gRPC uses HTTP2 as the transport layer. Okay. So, yes. Is that supported by all operating systems and all browsers and stuff like that? Uh, most modern operating systems support it. Browser support is a little different. Okay. Because while browsers themselves might use HTTP2, mm -hmm. the browser API is that you can consume. Like as a JavaScript, as a client-side JavaScript developer, right. may not give you access to the full fidelity HTTP2 framing. Right. So what we care about more is like XHR2 or Fetch. Mm -hmm. Do those APIs give me full semantics to do HTTP2? The answer is no. Uh, okay. So no i6, folks. Just modern browsers, right? Well, even no, just to clarify, you cannot do gRPC from a modern browser. Okay. So we we view it very much as a service to service, like as a premier technology for service to service communication. Right. There are some efforts, and you know, uh, there is the, an alternative protocol called mm -hmm. gRPC Web, mm -hmm. which shares the same roots as gRPC, but at the loss of some functionality, right. is able to do a limited subset of that via browser APIs. Okay. And uh, in addition to the gRPC stuff that we're shipping, we actually are, as an experiment, shipping preview support for gRPC web today. Great. Should we actually see an example of gRPC in action? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do, uh, what are you going to show us today? So I'm going to show you a simple uh, gRPC application. Okay. So for folks who aren't aware, We've been shipping gRPC since .NET Core 3.0. Perfect. And we ship with templates in the SDK. Fantastic. So I would, what I've already done, but I'll just, uh, so you see this, mm -hmm. I have, uh, there's a gRPC template in the box. So you can .NET new gRPC. Nice. I've already created gRPC server project. Okay. And I can go ahead and run this. Uh, so you know, it, so it's built on top of the ASP.NET app model. Right. So for folks who've never seen this, this output should look familiar. They're like, hey, this looks a lot like ASP.NET. Yeah, exactly. Because it actually is built on top of ASP.NET. Right. So I can jump over here, and I can go to the gRPC server project. Mm -hmm. And if you see, 
startup looks very similar, uh, sorry, and uh, I meant program looks very similar, and in startup, you will see I have add gRPC in my configure services, there you go. and I have map gRPC service. So if I had a, like, silly question, but if I have a .NET Core website, yeah. can I just go into services and add gRPC as well and then create another endpoint that can also serve gRPC yeah. over there? So it actually integrates into endpoint routing. So if you actually see, uh -huh. this also has an HTTP endpoint. Yes. This is just something we've put in the template that says, Hey, because when you open it in the browser, just to let you know, you can't do it through the browser. Right. Okay. But yeah, this this application does have an HTTP endpoint and a gRPC service. Great. There you go. So now you're like, what is this greeter service, right? Yes. So let's actually hop over from the code to the IDL file. Okay. So, the, so gRPC, while it's agnostic of the IDL format, the canonical usage is protobuf. Right, yep. So what I've opened is the protobuf file. So here's my file greet.proto, mm -hmm. and it contains two things of interest. Okay. It contains my RPC definition, right? And it contains definitions for the message types used by that RPC. Right. So Almost let's, like a contract. Yes, it is. It is exactly that. This okay. is my contract. There you go. Contract. Right. So first, let's look at the service definition, right? Yep. So I have a service called greeter, and you see I have a a unary RPC call called say hello. Yep. It takes a hello request mm -hmm. and returns a hello reply. Perfect. And as for what these types are, we yes. actually have them defined right here. Fantastic. Simple stuff. So what you do is, gRPC is opinionated mm -hmm. in that it is contract first. Okay. So you first write the shape of what your RPC would look like, and then there are code generation tools, not just for .NET, but across all other languages and runtimes as well, right. where you can generate both the message types and either service stubs if you're writing the service side of it, mm -hmm. or like client proxies, so you can actually make those calls. Brilliant. So you can you can take that definition of the contract, and then you can generate code for any language, both for the server yeah. and the client and the contract, uh, the types that are yeah. sent, right? Objects. Yeah. And Perfect. you said any language, but I mean a, a large ecosystem. Oh, yeah, yeah, not every language, language out there, but I suspect there's yeah. a list of the approved ones. Yeah, yes. there you go. Uh, so, so what we've done in .NET is we've actually integrated into the MS build system uh -huh. to give you nice code generation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to my project file. Okay. Just so you understand what's going on. Yes. Um, and you will see I have this item group with a proto buff element here. Okay. And I've actually included the proto buff, mm -hmm. and I've also said the type of code generation I want is a server. Oh, nice! Can you do server and client if yes. you wanted to? Just another line in there. Oh, it's just changing this value. But can I do them at the same time? Yeah. Ah, great. I believe it's the attribute is both. Ah, there you go. So it's um, so yeah. So once you include this, mm -hmm. you go ahead and build your project. Yeah. You have this generated code. Right. Uh. So if I just real quick just peek into my obj folder, mm -hmm. you'll see these files, greet.cs and greetgrpc.cs. So that contains, right. uh, greet.cs contains my generated message types. Yep. Greetgrpc contains the service stubs. Right. Great. Uh, if you were in Visual Studio, we actually integrate with design time build. Oh. So all you do is you go modify your proto file, you hit save, save. and it generates behind the covers for you. The power of IDs, my friend. There yeah. you go. Good. So I've gone ahead, I mean, I've already shown you this running, but yep. let's just go over semantics. So now we author this, mm -hmm. we build the project, it generates the code files, yep. and the, the thing for us to do is actually go up and implement the service. Yes. Right? So I have this directory called services, mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't have any special semantic meaning. It's just nice to organize my code. Yep. But uh, the generated code did generate this greeter base class. Great. Right. So everything derives from that greeter base, or is that? Uh, no. So the, so I would have to implement my RPC. On oh, right. Here. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Uh, so I've obviously overridden this say hello method, mm -hmm. and all I'm doing is pulling out the name from the request object okay. and returning hello space. Name. Identify request, I can see that. So very HTTP so, yeah. kind of thing. Yep. And if Great. you're familiar with ASP.NET Core, mm -hmm. you'll see things like, uh, you know, 
uh, constructor injection via DI. Yeah. So it's very similar paradigm. The idea was to use concepts of the app model that already work. Great. And make you immediately productive. Fantastic. Love it. Right. And the other part after you have actually implement the service mm -hmm. is there is no there's no magic there's no discovery of services. We want to wire up the services that we use. Yeah, very important. And I, I think I showed that before, but I'll show it right again, which is I go to endpoint routing, yes. and I say map this service. So in. once you create the implementation of the service, you come here and you audit yeah. after the fact. So Great. now it's running. Mm -hmm. I go back over here. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So my uh, application is still running. OK. And so now we have the part where we need to actually make a call. Right? Yes. And this is what I uh, alluded to earlier that a good RPC implementation will give you very much like local calling semantics, yep. even though I'm going across the network. Sure. So if I go look at my client, and this is my client application. This is a separate application yeah. that you wrote just to call so, your... So we should see some familiar elements. Okay. Let me just hide this for a second. So like, go to our project file. Mm -hmm. You see, again, we have some packages required for the protobuf stuff. Yep. Uh, we also have this uh, pro like include and if you see, I've actually pointed to the same proto file. Yep. So that's the source of truth. And I want to generate client code. Gotcha. And if we go real quick peek into my opt folder, mm -hmm. you can see the same thing. I have the message types, and then I have the client. So all makes sense now. Now it's pretty much new up the client proxy okay. and make a call. So the first thing we do is we create a channel. Mm -hmm. Channel is the underlying connection okay. to that to the server that actually hosts the service. Okay. And for the channel, we have the static helper method that takes the address. Mm -hmm. So I'm pointing it at localhost 50051. Yep. That's where my service is running. That's great. And now once I have a channel, I can new up a client. Tell the client, hey, make a rec like this is the underlying channel that you'll use. Exactly. Then now this hello request is a generated type. Mm -hmm. Remember, this comes from our IDL file. Yes. Uh, new it up. I've just put my name in. Nothing fancy. And then the actual calling is as simple as I just call client say hello async. Perfect. And now, if I go ahead and show you the, I guess the moment of truth. Yes. Is if I go ahead and run truth. this, you should see. The request comes in on yeah. the server side, so and the response the comes through. back on yeah. the client side. That's brilliant. I mean, it's simple, but yeah. I can I can imagine the underlying effort has been significant. But it's yeah. great to see that in action, right? Now uh, I have two questions. When should I use gRPC over the traditional HTTP kind of a client where I write with .NET Core? So uh, there are there are a few advantages to using gRPC. Okay, it uses HTTP2 is the framing mechanism, which means you get connection multiplexing. You can mm -hmm. have multiple uh, requests over the same connection. Okay. As well as it uses protobuf. It's a binary serialization format. Okay. So you, it's more compact over the wire. More efficient than yeah. Yes, right? more yeah. efficient. So it might make sense if you're like from a mobile device or something you want to okay. talk. The other thing is the the quality, I would say, of generated code mm -hmm. is at least in my opinion, is better than what we get for uh, generated HTTP clients. Right. So if you want, if you're in a polyglot environment, you have multiple languages. Yep. GRPC might be a, it might be a great leveler because you know you got a quality ecosystem no matter what language runtime you. Understood. Take. Okay. So you have the expected kind yep. of performance across multiple clients, multiple um, right. implementations. Okay. That's, and that's and then GRPC supports streaming. Right. Something that's not possible with traditional APIs. Yeah. Okay. And to that point, like one of the other things that I would want to doubt that at least I personally enjoy okay. is that it seems like REST seems to be a like a dogmatic fight. Mm -hmm. Right. If you ask people what is REST, GRPC, you could call it a strength or a weakness, but is opinionated. Okay. You can see I made a call, mm -hmm. even though it's based on HTTP, but I never specified what the path is, what the verb used is. All of that was covered by gRPC for me. Exactly. So it's it might be easier to get started. Okay. And if you aren't sure, you don't have to commit to using gRPC or Web API. Okay. As I showed you, the app model is very amenable to ASP.NET Core. Yep. You can wrap your business logic, and you can expose both the gRPC endpoint 
as well in it, as an HDB endpoint. That's great, right? So you don't have to choose one or the other. You can do either or, and that's great. So how do I get started today? Do you have a couple of yeah, absolutely. So links for us? Uh, this is the ASP.NET Docs page. Great. If you see, there's a section, Remote Procedure Calls. It's a top-level node in the documentation. Yeah, I can see that. It's highly recommend. This is a great place to get started. Okay. We also have, in under the Tutorials node, you'll see we have one for Remote Procedure Call apps. Awesome. And I think there will be more content coming in the coming uh, days or weeks. So we'll include everything in the description below on the video. So you can actually uh, go and deep dive into gRPC and see how you can start implementing it today. Well, Sharab, thank you very much today. It's been fantastic having you here. And it's uh, great to uh, learn about gRPC and uh, how to get started. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.